there is. Guys, believe it or not, that was our first cast of the day. And I don't believe in car, or what is it, superstition? Because I, I got a banana in the boot. All right, guys, he's about the same size as the banana. First cast, I don't believe in that superstition. And you see it right there, we have the banana in the boat, so. I'll take anything that wants to bite on the first cast. There he is. That might be a better one. There he is. Three pounder, not bad. All right, we're out here on Lake Gunnersville. Obviously my home lake, I love this lake. Uh, but this is a great place to throw a jerk bait. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna show you guys how to throw the jerk bait. And this is the one we're using. We're gonna link it in the description below. But we have nice clear skies today, Little, just a little bit of overcast, but the water's really clear. Uh, so normally I would start with hanky panky, which is like a whiter color, more of a bone color. But because the water's so clear and we got out here a little bit later and the sun's up, we're going more of a natural color right there. So. We're gonna throw this around, talk to you guys about how we do it. Water temperature is perfect right now, mid to low 50s. These fish are fattening up for winter. Uh, they are just gorging themselves on shad. The fish are super healthy right now. Doesn't mean you're gonna catch big ones every time you go, but there's a lot of healthy fish out here. And uh, we're gonna talk to you guys about how we do this. So stay tuned, it's gonna be fun. Might be a spot out there on a brush pile. No. Little largemouth on a brush pile on Lake Gunnersville. Tell you what, with forward facing sonar, I've learned there are more brush piles on this lake than I realized. He got it good. Not a keeper for Gunnersville. 15 inch minimum, he ain't gonna cut it. Got him. What are you, buddy? Come here. He was way up in the water column. Large mouth. Been catching some spots and largemouth mixed in together out here right now. He's another little largemouth. There's a huge school of fish down there. I lost one. Caught this guy and I've had several chasing it up, so it's amazing how far they'll come to get it. You think you water clarity is only three or four feet, but they can see ten. Fusion hooks are no joke. Gotta be careful with those. Love throwing a jerk bait this time of year. Cold water, water temps like 54, 55 degrees. These fish are just gorging themselves on shad right now, trying to fatten up for winter. All right, so you guys can see kind of what I'm fishing here. I'm gonna show you. This is you can see these uh, isolated clumps of eelgrass and you see these clean spots down in there. There's a fish above that clump of eelgrass right out there. Um, but the deal this time of year and really anytime you're out here on Gunnersville now with the eelgrass is finding those clean sections in it. If you just have nothing but eelgrass for miles or you know hundreds of yards, that's really not good unless you have a nice sharp break. And you can catch fish on the jerk bait on those nice sharp breaks but you have to be close to a clean edge. And that's what we're doing over here on this spot. This is actually, it's got a little break on one side where the, all the eelgrass is void. It's not there, it's a real clean, nice bottom. But then up on top, there's all these isolated patches with clean bottom too. So when you're fishing eelgrass, uh, make sure you, you find some clean bottom. That's huge, whether you're jerkbait fishing or anything else. There's Got another one on him.
There he is. That might be a better one. Feels heavy. As long as it's a bass. You never know. It should be a bass. Yeah, it's a nice one. I say nice. It's maybe three pounds, two and a half pounds. Large mouth though. He might not even be, well, he's so fat, he probably is two and a half pounds. You guys see the bait we're throwing right there. We're gonna link that down below in the description. I mean, that fish is short and fat. I bet you he's two and a half pounds. There he is. I think he's a little one. I don't know. Yeah, another little guy. We're gonna try and catch another one. We need to get a big one for you guys. I've been catching some nice ones on jerk bait, but of course when you turn the camera on, they shrink up. All right, one thing to always think about is current. And we just rolled up on a spot right here. We don't have any wind on this spot specifically. You can look around and there's a little bit of a breeze out there. Uh, but there's also no current. If you look down in the water, there's eel grass floating all over the place and there's no specific line to it. It's just kind of like scattered everywhere throughout here. And I don't really like that because the water's clean, no current, no wind. Uh, we tried this spot anyway. It's a spot I've been catching some fish on and just had a couple followers, but not commit. And that's because of this right here. So after a while, if we get a little bit of current or we get a breeze on this spot, I would come back here, you know, I wouldn't give up on it, but I would come back when the conditions are right. So, I mean, there's just eelgrass everywhere right here. This is, this is no good right now, uh, but definitely something to think about. And every time I get on the water, the first thing I do is look at the current, um, you know, go drive by a buoy, see what's going on, because it does matter even in the winter time, especially when you're jerkbait fishing and you want to find those groups of fish that are piled up. So we're going to move. One thing to keep in mind if you're ever out throwing a jerk bait is having multiple jerk baits tied on. And that can be sizes, right? To show them a smaller size. But what I mean by that more than anything is depth range. I'm gonna have at least two jerk baits tied on anytime I think I'm gonna be throwing a jerk bait, especially with forward facing sonar now because you can see how deep these fish are. So I wanna have a shallower one or just kind of your standard one like a 112 with a regular bill. You can see that bill right there. But then I also wanna have a deeper one that I can get down to those fish that might be in 10 or 12 feet. And it might only happen a few times throughout the day where I'm like, hey, there's a fish, it's down 10, 12 feet. Uh, I can't get this bait to it. I'm not gonna give up on that fish and not give it a chance. I'm gonna pick up the deep diving one. We have one tied on. We can't show you, don't even show the camera over there because we can't show you guys, it's a prototype. It's very good. It's a new one coming from Berkeley. Uh, but it's got a deep bill on it. That's all I will say. But you don't want to give up on those fish. If you see them like that, you want to be able to pick that deep one up, give them a couple chances, or you might be on the deep one all day and you see a shallower fish and you pick this one up. So either way, always have two or three jerk baits tied on anytime you're out there throwing one. We're gonna see if we can get another fish. Got him. Jeez. Be a bass. Yeah, it's a bass. Another fat, little fatty. You would think it'd be a spotted bass right here. All right. I don't know, two something pounds, not bad. So healthy. It's fun when they get it good. I've just missed one right there and I normally you miss one, you might not have a chance to catch another one. So thankful for that guy. There's a lot of information out there about how long you should let your jerk bait sit. You know, should you let it sit four or five, six seconds? 
and I just have a rule of thumb. It's pretty simple. As the water temperature warms up and gets in the upper 50s, 60s, I'm gonna fish it pretty fast and like a, a second or less of pausing in between the jerks. So jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause, you know, real quick. Uh, but when that water temp starts coming down like it is here now, we're getting into the low 50s, mid 50s, I'm gonna start letting, you know, one to two seconds between the pauses. And then as the water temperature further goes down, you know, you'll be able to see the fish's reaction on forward-facing sonar, their attitude towards the bait, but you're gonna find out that you have to let it pause longer. But really, I don't ever let it pause probably longer than, you know, four or five seconds. That's probably the max. I've heard articles or you read articles and seen videos about 10 to 15 second pauses. That's too long for me. I'm not, if that fish is gonna take that long, I'm not doing it. The only way I would let it sit there longer than probably five seconds is if the water temps were like low 40s or something like that. So just remember that, that'll help you, you know, remember your cadence of what you should be doing with the jerk bait. Looks juicy right there. There he is. That might be a big one. Oh yeah, I think it's a big one. He's not bad. Ooh, I like to click the bell. I don't like using the drag on stuff like that. He's not that big. But I like opening the bell, opening the spool when I'm fighting fish on a jerk bait instead of relying on the drag. All right, let's get him in. It's not a bad one right there, guys. Maybe two and a half pounds, two and three quarter. All right, good fish. See ya. Might be a little better. Yeah. He's a little bit better. He's not huge. But we moved over to a bluff. Good wintertime spot. I love, just like in the grass, just like being on the edge of eelgrass, those sharp drops, super important. Same thing with the bluff. So we got on a little bluff end. Three pounder, not bad. All right guys, that's more like it. That's what we're after I'm telling you, jerk bait bite on Gunnersville. Really, honestly, this day and age, it's year round, but my favorite time of year to throw it right now. Water temps in the 50s, it's a great time guys. I could come out here every single day and do this. So just remember, always have two of them tied on at least and uh, look for the current edges, look for those steep drops. I think my camera guy's hung on my Alabama rig right now. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to cut and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all the fun stuff and keep up with us here on YouTube. We're going to try to catch another one. See you later.